in other groups of people. Mm, I came to Dubai to improve my English, honestly. And uh, this is the reason why I, I will use some notes to explain my presentation. I promise you don't read it so much, but I, I, I try to do my best. Uh, my name is Adriana Gonzalez, I'm from Colombia, and today I want to speak with you about a very specific scenario of health, very specific scenario. Uh, this, uh, how can I put it? Forward and backward slides. Mm. Ah, yes. Uh, this scenario is the schools. Um, why I'm interested about the school or about the speak about the schools? Because uh, girls and boys spend a lot of time uh, in the schools throughout their childhood. Uh, then the schools definitely are key platforms to understand and promote children's health. I know the main goal uh, in schools is to achieve the highest academic performance and develop skills for the entire life. However, in the schools, uh, many things happen while the children are learning. Think about your own children, or maybe your nephews or your nieces. What other things they learn in the schools? The schools, after family, is in most of the cases the place the place where children socialize, learn interpersonal skills, and make friends. But sometimes it's also the place where they will be exposed to bullying and isolation. Sometimes the schools are the place where we learn the first things about relationship and sexuality. And for example, a lot of girls experience their first menstruation while attending the school. Um, how about alcohol, tobacco, and other psychoactive substances? We know that the school could be play a key role to educate and prevent children around this risk. And these are only three examples. It's necessary to say that the schools are a relevant stakeholder when we talk about children's health. If we are aware about this, in what kind of a school uh, would you like your children, nephews, or nieces to attend? I'm sure that you would prefer a school that is prepared to take care and promote children's health. This is a subject that uh, has created a lot of interest in the past decades. And currently, we have great public policy frameworks to promote children's health in schools. However, there is a huge gap between this framework and their implementation. The World Health Organization recently warned about this in 2021 during the follow-up to the implementation of standards for health promoting the schools. The thing is, we don't have today a systematic strategies to improve school health, and this is a very important thing. Maybe we are wasting a unique opportunity to promote healthy habits and prevent lifelong diseases for these children and their communities. Let's look at the numbers. In my country, there are more than 9 million of students in a school. In Latin America, there are more than 100, 140 million. And in the world, there are almost 2 billion girls and boys in schools. But yet, there is no standardized information of the health and well-being practices in schools. This is the reason why I'm here today, because I want to share with you the Wellbeing Index. Wellbeing Index is an innovative tool based on technology that allows us to measure and improve school well-being and school well-being conditions that are directly related to the health of each girl and boy. How it works? Uh, it's really simple. Let me show. At Webin, my organization uh, create and validate a survey that measures the level of accomplishment of the health school standards. Webin Index works as a self-assessment survey that the school's principal take 
online, even in places where the internet signal is weak, which deliver quick confidential reports and tailor-made recommendations. This is the first digital tool created to measure and promote school health conditions in schools around the entire world, based on the highest international standards. Let me show you the characteristics of this index and later some findings introduced in Colombia during the last year. Uh, what is the Walden Index structure? The Walden Index has a whole school approach and is based on the global standards of health promoting schools. Evidence has shown that these five components are directly related uh, to the promotion of shield health in schools and to approach to preventable diseases. Here you can see the internal indicators of the index. The survey was filled by more than 4,000 schools between 2020 and 2022 in Colombia and Jamaica. However, discussing policies, environments, services and partnerships does not sufficiently speak to the everyday needs of the school communities. So we create a set of thematic indicators that addresses specific conditions for welding that we know are a source of concern for many schools. Physical, and inter physical integrity and security, nutrition and healthy lifestyle, sexuality and gender equality, mental and emotional health, peaceful coexistence and inclusion. Let's see what we found using this index and methodology in Colombia during the last year. During 2022, more than 1,500 1, schools using the Wellbeing Index in Colombia. These schools are in rural and urban areas, and they are public and private, and serve over 1 million students from more than 300 municipalities in Colombia. What we found? We have found that on average, these schools meet around 50% of recommended practices to promote the health and well-being of their communities. Rural and public schools score is systematically lower than private and urban schools, meaning that interventions need to be based on the specific realities of each school. A second relevant fact is approximately 8 out of 10 schools don't feel they appropriately support the social, mental, and physical needs of, the, of their students. And this is a call for all of us to do more and better to support those schools with practical and easy tools to take care of the health students, detect and derivate early physical and mental issues. Also, also, we asked about the main areas where the schools feel that they need training. And we found this. Um, the first area where they need support is to promote mental and emotional health, followed by peaceful coexistence and inclusion, and also um, education for sexuality and gender equality. Definitely, the schools are very interested in promoting mental health and they recognize their direct relation with academic performance and life projects. Let's talk about mental health. As you can see here, the schools have a huge need to support mental health. In public schools, for example, there is only one psychosocial professional to attend 800 students and only 60% of the schools had a mechanism to identify and refer cases of mental health affection. In other hand, talking about climate, we found that 96% of the schools to have protocols to address a school violence situation, but paradoxically, only 90% of these schools had a mechanism to identify and refer cases of different types of violence in schools. Then we know that exists a truly interest in this topic in almost 
each school, but it's necessary to create functional strategies to manage this problem. Then, when we calculate the indicator of school conditions for mental and emotional health, we, have, we found that the school had only 36% compliance with the practice related uh, to mental and emotional health. This means, this means that there is a long way to go in this regard. For example, in teacher training, when we ask about education for mental health, we found this. The 5-6% the five, the five, of schools had trained their teachers in emotional health. The 40% had trained their teachers in social-emotional competence. The 32% had trained their teachers in suicide prevention. And only 25% of these schools had trained their teachers in positive discipline. Another uh, relevant finding is, although mar more than 70% of schools conduct activity to promote sexual and reproductive rights, only 19% of schools regularly provide information to students on modern contraceptives. That show that definitely we need to continue understanding the needs of schools in terms of school health, well-being, and facilitate facilitating aging tools like Wellbeing Index for their improvement. The application of Wellbeing Index showed that the schools are really, really interested in improving their well-being practices and need more support to do it. In other hand, we know that there are a huge gap into a different kind of school, especially rural and urban schools. And finally, we are sure that the school welding and children health requires comprehensive and systemic intervention. For us, it has been a wonderful experience to create this instrument and observe the positive impact of its use in schools. Now, we have alliance with more than 60 local governments in Colombia and the Ministry of Education in Colombia and Jamaica to use this information to make a decision based on evidence and to build a bridge that allow intersectional action for the health and each year of each girl and boy in the school. Now, Wellbeing Index is available in Spanish, English and French. Uh, it's free and only requires a basic internet connection. Uh, that's why I invite you to go to this QR code to say I want healthy, safe, and protective schools. Uh, we will continue to advocate and hopefully partner with you to ensure all the schools are centered on well-being. This is not only free, but, but also our sharing responsibility. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. Um, and some things that we need, all need help around the world yeah. with our children. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think COVID has spoiled a hell of a lot um, in children's lives, but also made everybody.